Hello everyone, welcome to Civil Engineering and Stuff and in today's video lecture we are going to discuss about Highway Lightning. So in your day to day life you must have observed that there are street lamps that are placed along the road. Now the road can be your urban road, it can be a national highway, it can be an expressway. No matter what the road is, there are street lamps that are placed and these the purpose of street lamp is to provide ample amount of visibility as you move along the road. Now, have you ever wondered what is the technical parameters by which these street lamps are placed on that road? Why the street lamps are placed at the side of the road and why not at the center? And you must have observed that there are cases where the street lamps are placed at the center of the road. So what are the criteria that are taken into consideration when the street lamps are placed at the side and what are the criteria where the street lamp can be placed at the center of the road and when placed at the side what is the proper position at which this street lamp can be placed what should be the height of the of the pole what should be the overhang, overhanging length that should be there what should be the illumination so this is the technical technical specifications that need to be considered while placing a street lamp across the road and this is what we are going to discuss in this video lecture so before we continue uh, to the video lecture do you know what kind of traffic signs are these if you know write down in the comment section and you can uh, watch a video on the traffic signs that I have already uh, made uh, and the link will be provided either at the at the cue card or at the description box. All right, so let us discuss the topic of this video, the highway lightning. Before we move towards the technical specification, let us first of all discuss the principle of visibility at night. So for an object to be visible, there are two parameters that are taken into consideration. The visibility of the object will depend upon the absolute level of brightness. That is how much bright uh, brightness is there all around the environment. Like in, in, uh, in the daylight, there is ample amount of sunlight. So the visibility is much better while the brightness at the night will be very less. So the absolute level of brightness is fairly less. The second parameter is the relative level of brightness of road and the object what is the relative level of brightness that is if our object will be darker the road is also somewhat have a poor reflective index so of course the visibility will be less while uh, there if the objective is a retro reflective kind of object the object gets bright enough right if our object is like that then of course we will require less amount of light to be incidented on these kind of object while if our object will be, pay, uh, will be opaque or darker in color then the amount of light source that we require will be somewhat of higher level now there is a phenomena called as silhouette this silhouette phenomena is when the brightness of the object is less than the background that is the background is brighter than the object then what will ha what happens is this silhouette phenomena occurs and because of this uh, silhouette phenomena the object appears to be darker if you observe in this image the background is brighter compared to the object so when the background will be brighter so the there will be a darker shade of object that we will get and if their condition is reversed that is there is a good amount of light at the object and the background is darker then the visibility will be much better and this is called as reverse silhouette all right so that is the like the overall principle of visibility that our light should be incidented over the objects for the better visibility and the overall there should be ample amount of light all around the surrounding now for the uh, street lightning at the road the factors that influence the night visibility are as follows. The first one is size and the brightness of the object. This means if our object is somewhat opaque, then 
a huge amount of light source is required or if our object is darker then again a much more uh, a co high quantity of light source is required while if the objective is somewhat retro reflective then the light source that is required will be somewhat of lower power as well as a smaller size the second point is brightness of the background that is what we have discussed in this image here if you see here the background is much brighter than the object so in that case we need a good amount of light source to be incidented on this object so that the object is much brighter than the background itself that's when we will ab be able to see the object much more clearly so the another factor that influences the night visibility is the brightness of the background the background should be of somewhat towards a darker side compared to the object right if that is not the case then we will incident more light over the object for a better visibility the third parameter is the reflective characteristics of pavement surface again if our uh, we have let's say a black top pavement right so the uh, whatever light that goes over these black top pavements will be absorbed by the road surface so uh, this need to be taken into consideration uh, for uh, deciding the visibility at the night then we need to take care of the glares on the driver side it should not be like the uh, height of the pole should be so uh, so should be said that that too much glare happens on or uh, is incidented over the driver side right we want to keep this glare as minimum as minimum as possible as minimum as possible why because if the if the glare is high then it will cause distraction towards the to the driver which we do not want then the reaction time available to see the object on the road should be sufficient right we have uh, we know about the pi ev theory right so we need the brain needs certain amount of time to process what the what uh, the brain is seeing and uh, likewise based upon the what the data the brain gets it needs again certain amount of time to react over the data right so the the illumination of the object should be such that that the ample amount of reaction time is available to see perceive and react to the object and uh, then the last is amount of light flux distributed from the lamp right so light flux light flux is the uh, is the measure of brightness of light source your light flux is the it is defined as the measure of brightness measure of brightness of a light source of a light source which will be lamp in this uh, in this discussion right and this uh, measure of brightness of light source is in the terms of energy that is being emitted by the by the lamp right the amount of light distributed from the lamp will be higher then of course will we will have good we will have a good visibility at the night if the uh, lamp that is used is of lower power then uh, the visibility will be less but then again going towards a higher power doesn't mean that uh, uh, everything will be okay we have to take into consideration the economical part as well as the glare part into our equation then only the uh, the size and quantity of lamp need to be decided and likewise the amount of light flux that is di distributed by the lamp is has to be decided for a efficient night visibility so these are the factors that influence the night visibility the light source that is the uh, lamp or the street pole that is installed over the road for a better visibility at night there are certain design factors that are taken into consideration these design factors are the type of lamp that we are going to use the luminar distribution of the light the spacing of the lighting units 
height of overhang of mounting lateral placement and lightning layout let us discuss about each in detail so the first one is the lamps and of course lamp will be the source of uh, light and it there are various uh, versions of lamp that are available if you talk about type we have a variety of type of lamps that are available we have filament based fluorescent based sodium or mercury based lamps the filament based uh, have the lowest initial cost and though being the lowest initial cost the energy consumption is very high right so they are not that much energy efficient and hence are not preferred so these uh, filament based lamps are only used in a very very uh, rare situations or where like uh, normal village roads uh, kind of areas in those areas the normal filament lamp can be used in general the preference is given to the sodium or mercury lamp uh, because their brightness is uh, comparatively very good with respect to the filament uh, filament lamps the brightness is very good as well as they are more energy efficient compared to the filament and in between these we have the fluorescent lamp talking about the size the largest lamps are preferred because they have much better reach as well as uniform illumination and are economical in nature okay so these are uh, the parameters that are considered for uh, in terms of lamp parameter now once we have decided the type of lamp that we are going to use in our street light then what should be the intensity of the lamp that we are going to install so this depends upon the luminar distribution of the lamp and needless to say the luminar distribution should be downward what do we mean by luminar distribution that the whatever the light that is emitting should be projected towards the road only right uh, you uh, we are going to discuss about different patterns in which the lamp can be installed so if uh, there is uh, there are open lamps that are installed which illuminate all across the uh, region and they are usually used in terms of like uh, as a aesthetic purpose not only to provide the lightning but to improve the aesthetic purpose so in case we are looking towards the uh, we are not looking at the uh, to beautify the area and our main goal is to have a good illumination so in that we have to uh, make our priority clear so the first and foremost priority should be that the distribution of luminar should be in the downward direction and whatever light that is being emitted should cover pavement between the curb from edge to edge right so uh, let's say this is one side of the road and this is the other side of the road so whatever distribution of uh, of lim uh, light is being there it should cover from one curb to another this is the minimum criteria that you are looking for right because that is where the uh, movement of the pedestrians vehicles takes place right talking about the intensity average level of illumination on the road side should be in between 20 to 30 lux on um, uh, important urban roads and on other roads it can be 15 lux and in case you know the lamp will not be uh, used as a primary source for secondary illumination level it should be between 4 to 8 lux we can see the uh, different patterns by which the uh luminar distribution can be taken into consideration so in a in a non cut off type of bulb uh, the illumination is is all across the areas our main priority is that the illumination should be there at the road side right so or at the at the downward direction rest it can be uh, varied based upon the decoration bureau of indian standard says that uh, 30 lux intensity should be there on the important road that is your national highway is your express ways and others can have a 15 lux and the minimum uh, linear distribution should be decided on the base, uh, based based upon the ratio of 
minimum lux to average lux where the minimum ratio should come out to be 0.4 what does this mean this means that on a road we let's say we have a road so uh, to to beautify the area or to uh, cut off the overall cost of installation and uh, execution we can install three main light source and in between these three main light source we can have few few minimum amount of light source right so that the overall there is ample amount of brightness all across the road right so let's say these major uh, are of uh, let's say 30 lux right and these are of 15 lux these are of 15 lux so what is the average lux average lux will be 30 plus 15 plus 15 plus 30 plus 15 plus 15 plus 30 divided by the number of of the lamp that are installed that is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 these divided by 7 right these divided by 7 will be the average what is the minimum lux minimum lux that is installed on the road is 15 so the ratio should be at least 0.4 so if the value is coming less than 0.4 then the value of uh, of one lamp can be increased right and uh, the other can be kept minimum depending upon the way it has to be planned so this is the meaning of the ratio 0.4 next we have the spacing of lightning units now what are the what is the criteria uh, at which the uh, what is the minimum spacing that can that should be kept in between the street lamps so the large lamp with high mounting and wide spacing for the large lamp we require we need like uh, the best will be high mounting and wide spacing because uh, the so that the maximum utilization of their light source can be done in general 30 meter to 60 meter spacing is taken in, taken into execution next we have the height and overhang of mounting now you see this is the height of mounting that is the uh, placement of lamps and this is the overhang at which it can it should be provided now what is the importance of this height of mounting and the placement of overhangs you see we have two options either uh, we the lamp that we are using either we can go for the high intensity we can go for a higher intensity lamp or we can go for a relatively lower intensity of lamp right now if we go for the lower intensity of the lamp then of course this height of mounting has to be reduced that is we need to place our lamp if you are going for a lower intensity lamp the height of mounting has to be reduced and we have to place the lamp at a fairly lower height the problem is that once we place our lamp at a lower height the shadow that will be produced on the road will be of higher length the shadow that is produced on the road will be of higher length yes so because of which again uh, the visibility will hinder but then again if we go for a higher intensity lamp if we go for a higher intensity lamp so definitely we can increase the height of mounting we can increase the height of mounting and because of the increase in the height of mounting the amount of glare that will be produced or sorry the amount of shadow uh, the length of shadow will reduce substantially the length of shadow will reduce substantially but the problem is when we go for a high intensity lamp the glare phenomena will start to occur right and this glare phenomena will distract the visibility of and the attention of the driver the visibility will hinder the uh, the driver who is moving on the road will get distracted so that is a problem if we go for a higher intensity 
we will have or we, if we go for higher intensity we will have a glare phenomena if we go for a lower intensity the height of mounting can be reduced but the length of shadow will increase all right so that is why it is very important to choose an optimum height of mounting as well as the optimum overhang so that the lamp that we are using can be utilized to its maximum capability okay so this height and overhang depends upon the distribution of, of light the shadow length and the glare effect and of course the glare on i will increase with the lamp power and decrease with the height of mounting right that is if you are using the low intensity lamp, uh, lamp it can be placed at a uh, fairly lower height so to uh, a general specification for the height of mounting that is kept into consideration is 6 to 10 meters right and the minimum vertical clearance for electric power lines up to 650 volts is kept as a 6 meter the role of overhang are used to keep poles away from the pavement edges and because of that the lateral placement comes into the picture right lateral placement means the placement of pole along the side of the road if street lights close to the pavement edge or carriageway free movement of traffic is obstructed definitely if we you can very well imagine if we have a pole right in between the street then the movement of the vehicles will definitely be affected so as per the irc specification the roads that have the raised curve uh, in case of urban roads the lateral placement can be 0.3 meters uh, in other areas it can be 0.6 meters from the edge of the curve so in short uh, if the road has curved the and the lateral placement should be 0.3 to 0.6 meter away from the edge of the raised curve if the road does not have a, a raised curve then the placement of the of the pole should be 1.5 meters from the edge of the carriageway and the minimum should be 5 meters from the center line of carriageway so if we see here in the in this road section the uh, the road doesn't have uh, do not have a curve while here we have the curb so as we know this is the curb this is the curb so the placement of the pole should be this is the placement of the pole the placement of the pole should be 0.3 to 0.6 meters from the edge of the raised curb here in this picture there is no raised curb so the placement will be 1.5 meters from the edge of the carriageway if you can see here this is the carriageway so 1.5 meter from the edge of the carriageway with a minimum of 0.5 meters from the center line of the carriageway okay next we have is the lightning layout lightning layout means the pattern in which the the street the uh, highway lighting can be done so if you see in the image here the light, the street lights are installed at the center of the road while the in image here a zigzag pattern is being followed right a zigzag pattern is being followed for the placement of light on the road so uh, needless to say a single site is economical compared to the uh, compared to the staggered position so uh, these are economical and are suitable for the narrow roads the staggered are suitable for the wider road and the central are again suitable for the wider roads the distance between uh, two street lights should be 30 to 60 meters for a single side in a staggered side again the distance should be 30 to 60 meters right it should be 30 to 60 meters for central also the distance is 30 to 60 meters this is how the placement is done these are again uh, the uh, as per the irc specification the lightning layout at the intersections okay 
so uh, all in all this spacing can be uh, can be decided based upon the formula that uh, the average lamp luminous multiplied by the coefficient of utilization multiplied by the maintenance factor divided by the average lux into width of the road this formula can be used if you are going for the design uh, if you are in fix like you are you want to install at the uh, irregular topography then this for the spacing can be found using this formula okay so this was all uh, for the highway lightning uh, thank you for watching i hope the lecture was useful to you and if so uh, like the video and uh, consider subscribing to the channel for more videos like this thank you for watching have a nice day